Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, January 30th, 2018 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Miami, Florida. Sort of the theme of today's podcast is insecurities in security products. We do have a number of them to report about today, starting with Lenovo's implementation of its fingerprint scanner. Biometrics in laptops has been around for a while, and one of the companies that actually, I think, sort of pioneered this somewhat was Lenovo, or actually back in the IBM ThinkPad days, fingerprint scanners were quite common accessories. More recently, Lenovo introduced Fingerprint Manager Pro. The application implements a password safe and allows users to log into websites and log into Windows by scanning a fingerprint. Sadly, the password safe is implemented quite poorly. Not only does it use a weak algorithm to encrypt the passwords, but you don't even have to decrypt them. All it takes is a hard-coded backdoor password to decrypt the data that's stored within Lenovo's Fingerprint Manager Pro. The vulnerability was disclosed to Lenovo by Jackson Torsemi of Security Compass. Lenovo has released an update last week. And running Clam AV as an antivirus scanner it is time to update. And actually, this is a system that you often see, for example, implemented on mail servers, not so much on workstations. Clam AV released an update fixing seven different vulnerabilities. Some of the vulnerabilities may be used to execute arbitrary code. Vulnerabilities affect, for example, the PDF parser within this antivirus tool, as well as various compressed and packed file formats like Tar. These kind of vulnerabilities are quite common in anti-malware products. Anti-malware products often have to do the same difficult thing that the software has to do that they're trying to protect. They need to decode these complex file formats and of course applications struggle with that. Over the last few years, I believe most antivirus products had similar problems where they had, for example, buffer overflows and the like when they were trying to decompress or decode various files. And well, apparently Malwarebytes and other anti-malware engine that you typically do see on desktops had similar problems. Now, in this case, it wasn't actually any of the decoders. Instead, just the file for their updates was corrupt. And on Friday, users noticed that Malwarebytes took an enormous amount of CPU and memory resources. Now, Malwarebytes was pretty quick to release an update for this failed update, but well, that one failed again, had a similar problem. Sunday, it looks like they ultimately got this under control. According to Malwarebytes, this was really just a malformed update that wasn't parsed correctly by the client. And as a result, well, you had these memory issues. And Cisco released a critical update for its adaptive security appliance. This update fixes an issue in Cisco's SSL VPN implementations. Cisco also calls that a web VPN that can lead to not only a reload of the system, but could also be used for an unauthenticated remote code execution. And again, remember, this is sort of a VPN endpoint, so you may have that actually exposed to the outside world. The vulnerability also affects Cisco's firepower devices. And uh, please refer to the advisory for an authoritative list of affected devices. There are a number of different models that are affected by this. As a workaround, you can turn off the feature by looking for the web VPN feature in Cisco's CLI. And well, if you don't use it, you probably should disable this anyway. And like it isn't hard enough to pay for your ransomware ransom via things like Bitcoin and Tor, Proofpoint spotted another interesting problem. 
If you prefer not to install Tor yourself, then you can use one of the various web gateways that proxy connections from regular browsers to Tor. One of the more popular gateways, and apparently it's the number one when you're searching for these type of gateways on Google, is tor to web at onion.top. Proofpoint noticed that this particular gateway altered Bitcoin addresses used to pay for ransomware. And as a result, the ransom is then deposited into the wrong Bitcoin wallet, not the wallet the ransom was supposed to deposit to. And of course, the victim loses twice here. It was actually the ransomware writers that apparently first spotted this problem and proof point and noticed how some ransomware specifically warned users not to use onion.top because well uh, they apparently had lost some of these ransom payments as a result of this bitcoin address swapping done by onion.top Proofpoint also looked at some of the addresses as being used here and apparently the scheme was at least partially successful. Some of the Bitcoin addresses being substituted in here actually did receive some money. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.